In section 3.1, we looked at measures of central tenancy, the mean, the median, the mode, but for raw data, right? And then in 3.2, we looked at measures of dispersion, measures of spread, namely the variance and the standard deviation, but again for a column of data. But what if you want to work with a frequency distribution or a relative frequency distribution? How would it work then? What if you want to look at a weighted mean? How does that work? That's what we're going to look at in section 3.3. .3. So it's going to be expanding upon the ideas of 3.1 and 3.2. All right, let's start with a weighted mean. So a weighted mean is a measure of center for a data set similar to an arithmetic mean. But instead of using each data point xi contributing equally to find the average, some data points contribute more or less depending on their weight. Now, you know about this calculation if you've ever calculated your GPA. So when you calculate your GPA, for example, not all the grades count exactly the same. So your grade is your XI, right? So if you look at this student, so Ashley took four classes this semester. She got a 4.0 in her four credit, four credit stats class, of course, a 3.0 in her five credit chemistry class, a 3.5 in her two credit fitness class, and a 2.5 in her three credit English class. What is her GPA for the last semester? All right, so in 3.1, we learned how to find an average just by taking the four scores and adding them up and dividing by four. But that wouldn't be fair here because her stats class is worth four credits, whereas her two credit fitness class is only worth two credits. So it shouldn't count for equal amounts. So we want to weight the grades depending on what the class is worth in terms of credits. So let's see here. So we have the GPA. It's going to be a weighted mean. It's going to be the grades times the credits all added up divided by the credits all added up. So let's see. So we had a 4.0 times 4 credits plus and then a 3.0 times 5 credits plus a 3.5 times 2 credits plus a 2.5 times three credits. And then you add it up all that up, you multiply each one and you add them up and then you divide by four plus five plus two plus three. Right? Now remember order of operations says you multiply, multiply, and then add, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Multiply, then you get to add. So if you do that, let me show you with a calculator real quick. So to be four times four plus three times five plus 3.5 times 2 plus 2.5 times 3. And the calculator will know to do the multiplications and then the adding. So this is 45.5 divided by 14. I can do that much in my head, which gets to be, if I take that last answer and I divide it by 14, I'll get 3.25. And so there's the GPA. Now I showed it calculating it by hand using the formula. And that's all well and good, but the calculator will actually help us out immensely with this. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go to the calculator, make it be the big screen so you can see. All right, so I'm going to go to Stat, Edit. And I'm going to go up and clear, Enter. And so I'm going to clear out L2, and I'm going to go up, clear, Enter, and clear out L1. Always want to clear them. You don't want to delete them. You want to clear them out. All right, now I'm going to type my grades. So 4, 3, 3.5, and 2.5 were the grades. And then 4, 5, 2, and 3 were the respective credits. Okay, so L1 has the grades. L2 has the credits. So then you press stat, calculate, number 1, one variable stat. Now your data, your list, is L1, so second one enter those are your x values and your frequency list is your weights right which is your credits so l2 second to enter so we're finally getting to use frequency list but again you only want to do it for a mean like this where it's a weighted mean or for something that's coming in another second or so so we do l1 l2 and then we go down to calculate and press enter and it'll run it and there it is right at the very very top 3.25, the same value we found when we did it by hand, right? Okay, and then I have all the instructions right there on the page anyway. So you can see frequency list is L2, list is L1, etc. 
All right, so that's how to find a weighted mean by hand and using the calculator. Feel free to use either way. Let's take that idea and expand it to a frequency distribution here. So we have the values of letter tiles in the popular game Scrabble. So here's Scrabble, here are the tiles. So we have the point values and we have the number of tiles, right? So there are how many tiles that have zero point value? Well, there's two. It's these two blank ones down at the bottom. So let's put that in. That's two. And then we need to know how many have eight and how many have 10. Well, 10 would be the Z and the Q. So that's two as well. And then eight would also be two because that's the X and the J. See there, X and J. There's two there. All right, so there you have it. The, the three spots that you're missing were all two. All right, now, what type of data is the variable point value? So when you look at these values, that is definitely discrete for sure, right? Because you can't have 2.365 of a point. It's either two or it's three, right? And it doesn't have unlimited decimal places. That's what it takes to be continuous. And it's definitely not qualitative. Qualitative is things like words or numbers that have no numerical calculations possible, like zip codes, stuff like that. All right, the level of measurement would be ratio because it's a number that you can do a calculation from. That's how you play the game, right, is racking up points. However, you can't have negatives. So interval would mean you could have negative points, but that's not possible in Scrabble. So you can only have positive points. So that means it's ratio. Now we're going to find the mean, the median, and the mode point value. Well, the mode is actually really easy to spot, right? There's the mode. I'm going to make it blue or something so you can see it. So the mode is 1. Now it's not 68. 68 is just how often the 1 occurred. 1 is the actual mode, right? The tile the point value that occurred the most often. What matters to you is the x values, not how often they occur, which is the frequencies, right? So this is technically frequency over here on the right. That's not relevant. It's, it's relevant. It tells you which one's the mode, but the mode is actually the 1, not the 68. Similarly, let's find the mean and the median. Now to do that, let's use the calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the calculator and type in these values. So stat, edit, up, clear, enter, up, clear, enter. Type in the numbers. So once you get them all in there, there they are, lovely. You've got to make sure, by the way, that you put in points for everything, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all that stuff. This is a frequency distribution that you're putting in here. All right. So in other words, the two columns have to be the same length. That's what I'm saying. So 9 didn't have anybody there, so put a 0 for the frequency there. All right, then you go to stat, calculate, one variable. And again, my X list is in L1 and my frequencies are L2, so this is perfect. And we go down to calculate and press enter. And I get the mean is 1.87 up at the top and the median is 1 right there. So mean is 1.87 and the median 1. So I'm going to put those in there. Median. And there we go. I'm going to highlight those just so they're a little bit easier to see. Okay, next. What is the shape of the distribution? Well, I actually drew a little picture of it here so you could see. So you only have two zeros, then you have 68 ones, then you have seven twos, eight threes, ten fours, one five, no sixes, no sevens, two eights, zero nines, and two tens. So you can see it forms this picture right here. Okay, so then how can we tell the shape of this distribution? Well, we can see that it is skewed right. Now, grant you it's because we drew a picture of it, but how could you tell just by looking at this? Well, you can tell it's skewed right because the mean is greater than the median. So because the mean is greater than the median, right? Also, look at the sketch. Well, actually, it's not a sketch anymore, but the histogram 
at left, right, which you would draw in. But you can see you got a big tall bar for one and little itty bitty bitty bars for everywhere else. So it definitely is a right skew distribution like that. All right, you're playing Scrabble with a friend and they ask you, what's the average point value for a tile in the game? Say it's somebody who doesn't know this game. So what will we say the average value is? Average. Now, what you don't want to say is 1.87, and here's why. Because this distribution is skewed right, you don't want to use the mean because the mean gets pulled a little bit higher than we actually think is fair. So you could say two things. You could say the median, which is 1, because the distribution is skewed right, the median is the better measure. Okay. The other option is to say the mode, because quite frankly, we have so many tiles are one point, right? 68 of them. There are 100 tiles in a game of Scrabble, 68 of them are one point. That means that the vast majority of time when you reach in, you're going to be reaching in for a tile that's worth one point. So that would be a fair way to say it as well. So either one of those is correct as long as you back it up with a good explanation. What you don't want to say is the mean. The mean is no good to you because the mean is skewed right, or excuse me, pulled right because of the skew of the distribution. And that means it's not a good measure of center.